Okay, guys, we are coming to a halt. This is the last one. I got through all these finally. It's going to take me a while to render all these, but this is the last one, last react video you'll see on this channel. So, sub for Geo two times, link in the description if you guys want to see reactions like this. And we're hopping into life in the first person, which is very important to me because I love the FPS stuff just as much as the flight sim. And I think CIG's been doing good so far uh, with the feel of the guns in this game. Hello, everyone. Hello. You know, it's a... Am I too early? No. It's a real pleasure to be here at CitizenCon in person. I've had so much fun. Thank you all. That shirt goes hard. Uh, but my Seal name is Jan. I'm here from Manchester. I'm going to talk to you about some improvements to play traversal. So we're going to start in CRG, where we've been rebuilding the EVA experience from ground up. Let's go. So the first thing you should see is that we've made the uh, exit from gravity less disorientating. Look how smooth that is. Oh, we're going to face plant. Ah, uh, we made it. <laughs> All right, so we made the re-entry much more forgiving. Um, so this uh, EVA has a new prone lateral pose, and this is really important to us because it allows us to get close to surfaces and it allows us to walk across them. So we can see that in this video here. Oh, man, this is so cool. I can't wait till this comes in. Okay, and as it goes to the end, we're going to jump off. Okay, here we go. Into that. And this smaller profile Ooh. lets us get into spaces we couldn't get into before, or not easily with the old EVA. We're going to traverse through here, thread the needle. Look how fluid that the is. The collision is much more forgiving. We're going to slide off at slower speeds, so we're oh. not going to be spinning away. Okay, big reveal. Oh, that looks well beautiful. And we're also adding grips. So in the interiors, you might be able to hold on to grips to do interactions boom and walk between the grips to get better control i love that smoothness it's like out of smoothness is like on spider-man when you're traversing thank you very much just smooth dog so now prone has long been a problem motion set for us right but but taking these eva posting solutions we have saw we can now rotate around the camera without any oh. trans lateral translation so we're not rotating around the hips anymore and it allows you to aim much better. Oh, that's beautiful. We're also not moving the body, so we don't need to worry about the external collisions anymore. Look how clean so it is. We're not going to get pushed around. Ooh. Bravo, CIG. Bravo. Of course, prone isn't all about looking around. We want to traverse as well. So we're going to head down this vent. And here we put in a new collision style. So this is all about letting you have control in narrow, small spaces, smaller than this. Uh, we're going to be able to push around the corners, we're going to go around tight bends, and we're going to be able to reliably go up and down slope. Well, I can't wait to sneak uh, around events. And this is where Prone led the way. So we then took this and we put it into the EVA. So if I turn off gravity here, which I'm not going to do, but if I did, the EVA would have been able to traverse the exact same place. And by having the sa these motion sets so similar, we can exchange success between them. And that could then be done to other horizontal sets, like prone light sets, for example, like the water wheel showed it last um, yesterday. We might be able to take you swimming there one day. So. Oh, <laughs> swimming confirmed. Okay, we're gonna move up from the horizontal to the vertical. So we subnautica ladders, citizen. We put in some uh, new subtle and significant improvements. So we got midpoint markups. that let you enter the ladder at anywhere. That's clean. We're going to let you look around so you can do 360s. We're going to let you lean on the ladders so that you can avoid obstacles or peek around corners. And this all got a full new animation. Like a smooth transition, like on Assassin's Creed when you hop on stuff. Star cloth. You know, you got both, both the hood and the cape there. Uh, it looks amazing. I remember when Cyberpunk first um, came out, when you turned okay, around, so you'd be in the T pose combat, looking, and your character be in T pose. So <laughs> I think they fixed it in uh, the latest the update in Cyberpunk, though. Move at the same speed with and without the weapon arm. We've re reduced the inertia, so you're going to be able to push up to your desired speed faster. And this is already in 320 and 321, and we got more things like this to come. Oh, this is it now. I, I, I can't wait to try that out. 
Right, so I didn't just want to talk about improvements. I've hinted oh at swimming, boy. but I'll show you a different feature, right? So sliding. So with the power slide, you inject a burst of speed. Oh, no, CIG, no, 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 no. This was one of the things I didn't like at CitizenCon. Why, why, why? Every game I've played with sliding is always abused and it's annoying as hell. It's not fun to use, in my opinion. And I don't ever use it. I like just straight up, head up gunfights. Um, the other games that abuse stuff, um, when I play Battle Bit, if you, if you lean left and right, it keeps your, um, I guess your, your recoil doesn't go up. So you just like you're shooting lasers. Halo, you jump up and down. Like people abused stuff like this and, and get uh, first person uh, shooters. And he just spammed it three times. He just boom, 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 back to back. And that can't be good. I like, there needs to be like some penalty when you're sliding across there. Maybe I think they said stamina is going to take, uh, take effect, but you just, did a pow, pow, pow three, and you sitting there, you need to be out of breath. Your gun needs to waver a little more. Like, there needs to be more penalties for sliding on the floor. And I, I really hope CIG, I, I'm going to give them, give them some trust that hopefully they nail it, but every game I have played sliding is terrible. I played the Call of Duty beta, what was that, October? And it, that's all it was, was a slide. Fest. Just sliding, just run up and fight me head up. Like, all that sliding and all that silly shit. Oh, I, I hate sliding, bro. But this is don't, like one of the only things I didn't like at Sizagon. This doesn't take you, just take you from A to B faster. You're going to have a reduced profile. You become a smaller target. Uh, it doesn't come for free. You know, you're sprinting. That's going to cost you stamina. You're sliding. That's going to add some stamina. You should get cost. one slide. And when I do it back to back like this, my heart rate is just pumping, pumping, pumping. Right? So you got to be yeah, a bit not good enough. You can't just slide your, your whole way from the hubs to the uh, spaceport. Okay. So another thing that is really important to us is that with the slide, it's a short duration, but we want interactivity as soon as possible. And that's true for all our motion sets. We're going to go through all of them and give you interactivity. Uh, so with the slide, we want you to be able to aim around as soon as possible. The moment you hit the ground, you're going to be able to aim around, all right? And the direction is locked. So if I was to slide from one end of the stage to the other, I would be sliding this way, but I'd be looking this no, way. I don't right? think you should be able to guys, shoot. Hey? Uh, but while I'm sliding, I can hip fire. And as I come out in the exit, I can ADS, I can lean. I could go back to sprint right mm. away. So I could do back-to-back -back, uh, slides. Cool in, first uh, like uh, in a single one. player. I don't know about the okay, multiplayer. So the only up. saving grace with this might be, I think a lot of the, the gunfights and PvP are going to be mid to long range. I don't think there's going to be that many up-close battles. That might be the saving grace. But that was still too smooth, too much fluidity going on for you to be sliding around and are you different armors hopefully you go slower can't do it at all i think maybe you should just leave that to the lightweight if you're gonna have sliding just lightweight um medium heavy shouldn't be able to do it um that's another way to balance it out i just, I just don't know i just do not like sliding bro uh, traverse i don't use it and i don't like section. it i want to talk about new hazard now you saw, saw this uh, yesterday in the ui demo um, I lost my spot. Bone, can you press the button? That's it. Okay, radiation. Right, so radiation for that is a new addition to this active status system. And we, look, we, get, we need to look at the uh, bottom left here. Oh, look at that. So in the middle, you got the amount of radiation. Uh, oh, look at that radiated pico. I want if that. You have a directional source, it's based on your body surface and your distance to that source. By going behind the cover here, I can completely cut off all the radiation. So I can use that. And then on the, on the left, we have an icon oh, that's gonna be that has cool. a shield around it. Now, that shield works in two ways. Right? First of all, it comes from your outfit. So depending on what you're wearing, you're going to have a better or, or, or less accurate shield, right? See, that? now that's cool because there, there might be some planets where you have to have a specific suit to go to a uh, you know, specific area. And you just can't wear your, your favorite armor. You got to have a specific armor, or maybe on certain planets. Um, that There's a lot of radiation. You have to have a specific suit just for that. So you're not going to be able to, you know, rock your same loadout like you're used to. You're going to have to switch it up. That's going to force players to switch it up. I kind of like that. Uh, it has a threshold. 
as long as your radiation doesn't exceed the threshold, the shield will hold true. It'll scrub all the radiation off, and you can stay there as long as you like. But as the uh, shield starts uh, peeling off, the and when the radiation gets higher, the shield will peel off. And you know the radiation ki sickness kicks in right at the end of the video here. And the mm. my health just deteriorates super, super quick. Uh oh. Um, so yeah, that's not great. OK, so we're going to see some more radiation in the, in the next, uh, next section. So I, I would like to welcome Inesh up on the stage. Thank you very much, everyone. Why are we showing that? OK. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Inesh, and I'm a gameplay programmer here at CIG. And I'm here today to tell you all about, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> so, and I'm here today to tell you all about the features we've been working on to improve the player interaction experience with the physical objects in the world. So let me start by telling you what we love made interaction it easy for with you stuff. to identify and interact with these objects in the world. We have introduced in the new uh, So when can we play those cards on the table? That's what I want to play. Over the objects as a player Some poker, appears. blackjack. This, combining with scanning, will help the player to easily identify the interactable objects in the scene. So we have improved the algorithm that our interaction system uses to determine the current item in focus. So you'll have a smarter detection and selection as you move around and look around the scene. So the prompts will show you the active interaction and the key bind that you can use to quickly trigger it, like you see on the pictures. So we are I hope they make a real version of that uh, of Zeus. I want that Mark 1 Zeus objects. plushie in real life. You no longer have to go into interaction mode to bring up the cursor, then drag it over and to select using the inner thoughts. So we're removing mm. that. <laughs> That's clutch. That's going to be a huge quality of life. So what happens if an object has more than one interaction? Well, for that, you can just simply hold in old half, and this will bring you the new interaction wheel. So this is our new interaction wheel. It will be focusing on the item. And you can see that mm. two of the interactions have a star icon. So this is related to another system that you are bringing to you that we call in the default item actions. So this is allows us to have a primary interaction, that's the one that shows on the prompt, and a secondary interaction. So these are default actions that you can easily trigger using shortcuts. So this mm. change, these actions will change based on the combination of the item, the player, and the environment state. And although designers do choose the default actions that we bring to you, you are fully able to customize them to fit your preferences and playing style. So let's take a look at that. Oh, yeah, that's going to be action. clutch. Here you can see the prompts that change depending on your focus. So that let's bring up the wheel. And you know, I really like my plushies, so I want to inspect them when I find them around. So I'm changing that to my primary. And you'll see that does not oh, affect only so the cool. item you're interacting with, but any item that falls into the same category. Oh, yeah, I'm probably going to just throw mine to. Uh Throw in the bag because okay. I'm a loot goblin. Okay, so I've shown you some features that improve. <laughs> Thank you. So I've shown you features that improve the readability and easiness of interacting with the objects in the world. But the other part of our focus was to bridge the disconnection between the player and the object you are interacting with. In a fully physicalized world that we want to provide you, a tactile experience is very important to sell the experience. So we've introduced a new system that allows us to play animations on the player of actually reaching out and physically touch the objects in the world. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Let me interact with the world, baby. So our main goal was to give you a better immersion, Minim but at the same time, minimizing the friction and the control we take away from you. So this really was an exercise between code, design, and animation to give you the best experience possible. Let's see some of this in action. And you know, pressing buttons has never been so satisfying and fun. <laughs> oh, wow. Just walk up and press it? Oh, man. I don't know. I just kind of like like oh. See, I mean, some of this stuff seems like it could get put. It could get put in the next update. Like it seems so like simple. Oh, 
fine. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, so let's continue with this theme of tactile experiences. The next thing I want to talk to you about are usable interactables. So usables are objects that have existed in our game for a very long time. And you know, designers have had a variety of tools to build these really interesting and complex sequences for the AI. But up until now, what we could do for the player was fairly limited. So this past year, we've been building up our tools that are provided for designers that designers could build these really interactive experiences for the player. And the advantage of using the usable system is that anything that the player would be able to do, the AI will also be able to do. So mm. let's have a look of a simple demo that one of our designers put together to see what we can now achieve. So in this scenario, the, the player has... Look at that. Like, look how the little details in this game, I love it so much. Like, look at how the light is bouncing off the water. Shout out to the lighting team. Like, look at that right here. Like... So, it's like the little simple stuff in this game. Like I, I, I'll be watching like Red Dead Redemption uh, Two TikToks, and there's still stuff to this day. Like I've been watching for a year that the little details that games that come out in 2023 can't even do, or they just didn't even try to do. It's like the little details. I love that type of stuff, and CIG's doing the same thing. But can't go for it because of the toxic water. So he has to go over to the valve to turn off the water. So before we could maybe play a simple animation when you interact it, but now designers can give full manual control to you. So you, by pressing specific inputs, you will be driving the system. So, but this is not enough. We needed to be able to give designers a way to translate what the player is currently doing and affect other objects in the world in specific ways. So this is what is happening here. As the player is turning the valve, is controlling the flow of the water that's coming from the pipes. And what should happen when the player is no longer in control? Do we want to keep the state, revert back to the initial one, or maybe trigger something else altogether? Well, it's up to designers to de define the type of experience they want to bring to you. So let's finally turn off the turn off our valve rush over before that broken valve starts turning off and then see I want to see people get wrecked crumble. by water. <laughs> oh, let's go. So yeah, you'll see another small example where you won't be able to open the door by a press of a button, but you have to manually interact with that pump and manually open it. So you'll have to time your inputs to slowly open oh. the door. So this is just a small taste of the level of interactivity that we can now have with these objects. If I see we someone really pumping nice that door, for the I could just sit behind and wait. And, and you know, I can't wait to see what the PU designers will create and bring up to your hands. <laughs> oh yeah, a lot of people are gonna get stuck pumping that door, get lit up. <laughs> gonna get a little like okay. a Christmas tree. Let's quickly talk about kiosks and terminals. And let's be honest, it's really hard to interact and get a good view of these ones. So we have created, we made a small little changes to make it easier for you. We've created a new focus mode that will walk the player. They smell perfectly smooth and wrong. It says smother so and easy in action. The, uh, the screen on the viewport. At this point, the interactive screen will steal the input focus until you actively choose to leave. So let's take a look at this in action. And look at that when you trigger it. And like, uh -huh. yeah. So this is a very small quality of life improvement. Yes, that, will that make is it much definitely for you good quality of life. See, like. That should be in like know, 322. Oh, finally, like, let's talk about looting. That seems so this is simple. Our new looting screen It's not replacing the inventory, but it will be used when you're looting a body or any other lootable in that you find in the world. Mm. It was specifically designed to improve this experience. So, since looting is a common action during SPF combat, we, especially if you haven't fully prepared ahead, we wanted to make it as easier and quick as possible, so you could spend the minimum amount of time to grab any items you need from your target. So it displays the current loadout and a simplified version of the inventory. 
Looting space favors speediness, while the inventory is there, so you can fully manage your. I don't think I ever looted anybody because so last time I played, I don't think this was even a mechanic. Especially on the UI and art, but I want to give you a little sneak peek how this all works. <laughs> I love when they okay, feet fold up like that. <laughs> and I better just. So oh, you see, shit. The, the player loader is on uh, items are on the bottom, the target is on the top. You, you can hover, if you hover the different widgets, you'll see a tooltip that with the different quick actions you can do. You can just simple oh. press. <laughs> oh, that is so clean. Yeah, it'll be so much easier. Some space Tarkov so, yeah, going you can on. Quickly press to just equip or swap. You can even use your mouse wheel if you want to change the target. You can, uh, yeah. See, that's a thing that. I'm going to really love about guns. Hopefully there's some rare items. Um, I should say upgrades to the gun, like heavy barrels, optics. Hopefully you can't buy everything in the store. And some of the stuff you just got to find in the verse, which will make your gun more valuable. Like, hey, I got to go back and go pick up that gun because it had, you know, this, this, this on there. And you can't buy it in the store. So I'm going back to where I just got killed at. I got to go get it. That's going to make your gun valuable, make Stop your gun anything, special. Well, Start anything just really quick actions and you'll see in a minute that we also can trigger ammo repooling so this will grab all available ammo either from your target or from your inventory and will fill up the magazines in your loadout and drop and get rid of any empty magazines so yeah looking really good yeah so it's looking really good and i can't wait to see the final art so that's all from me. So thank you so much for listening. And I hope you have a great time. <laughs> right. Hello, everyone. For those who cannot remember, my name is Jens. And I'm now going to talk to you about some changes we made to our stealth gameplay. And I'm going to give you an update on weaponware. Right, so takedowns is an important part of our uh, stealth encounters. So this is where we're going to add some player, player skill progression to kind of move you through different action sets. You're going to start off by struggling. Damn. You might fail. Elbows you right in the face. Of course, this, will, this sort of added time and the extra noise you're making is really going to increase the, increase the risk of detection. I can't wait to use a prison shank. you do it. I want to shank some fools in prison. Maximum efficiency. Check this one out. So he's so fast, you can barely see him do it. And then he guides the body to the floor. But he wasn't dead. No noise, right? Um, we're going to explore some more variation beyond our unarmed and our knife takedowns, like sedative injection pens and contextual takedowns. So this guy on the railing here, let's see what we can do about him. Damn. <laughs> Got folded like an omelet. We can, make a more, we can do a more efficient takedown than maybe our skill level would have allowed. Got skull banged. Was he bleeding? Cooler, <laughs> and we're going to be able to use this to get to enemies that might be otherwise difficult to, to get to with our normal takedowns, like a pilot strapped into his pilot. Hey, bro, I want to see that nosebleed tech on, on stuff like that. I want to see some bruises. <laughs> I want to see him fucked up. Sneak up on him and take him out. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, in uh, that last video, we incapacitated that enemy uh, <laughs> a lot. Uh, I'm going to introduce you to a new weapon, a new item, sorry, and that's the restraints. So with the restraints, okay, let's take him down first. I wonder if other players will be able to fight that off. One more. Oh, oh they're going okay, his legs. So the restraints, we're going to turn him over. We're going to cuff his hands. We're going to cuff his legs. Oh, yeah, hog tie his ass. <laughs> Oh boy, I can't wait to troll some people with now, this. Now, if he wakes up, he can't chase us down, right? But he could call out for help. So what we're going to do as well is we're going to add places in the environment where you can stash a body. You can hide them, either unconscious or dead. And there were, that way it should be easier to remain undetected and keep you in that stealth bubble. Okay, so he's not calling um, people on the radio. You just got to hide him. He can't call for help. Okay. In the UI demo. Uh, which is the ping, and we saw it in Inesh's presentation, and she did a short ping to highlight a, a door pump. Now, of course, we, we, we allow you now to charge up that ping, and by doing so, we can see further, and we can see through obstacles, and we can populate more information into our data bank that then uh, shows up in our um, 
I gotta be honest, y'all. This is so obviously the sliding I don't like, and this was the second thing I didn't like. These are the only things I didn't like. That's it, kind. This one not as much as uh, the slide. I despise and hate that feature so bad. This isn't so bad in single player, but I can see this getting abused in the multiplayer part. It just seems like it's too easy mode. Um, I would prefer something like getting a drone to fly around or even a ground drone to spot them out as gadgets instead of using this. Um, I know you're going to be letting the missions out and people could see you if you if they have the right equipment to find you. But who's going to be walking around with that armor? I mean, it's kind of cool that some people, you're going to have to have a variety in your squad. Like, hey, we need an anti-scanner guy to make sure we're not, you know, no one's sneaking up on us and stuff like that. But this just seems way too easy mode. Some James Bond type shit. You just scan the area. You got the gadget. You can see the skeleton of where they're at. What guns are sitting around? It's just, it's just too, it's just too easy mode. I just, I, I don't really uh, care for it. I mean, it looks cool. It's just, I don't know. I don't know how it's gonna work in multiplayer. Here. So you get the name, and you maybe get the race, and maybe the faction, uh, and you can use this information to figure out where. Where's the weak link? Which, which enemies can I take down without being discovered? Um, there's a risk here, okay? So there's a charge up time. Means you can't do it all the time. It's gonna recharge slowly. You see the bar at the top slowly going down. Yeah. Until that goes all the way down, I can't ping. I can't even do a short ping. And uh, it's gonna spike my emissions uh, or my signatures. Uh, and so an enemy with the right equipment or tech level might discover me. Um, okay, so... That's a big might. Let's move on to some talk about uh, weaponware. So here we're going to see a simulation of a weapon getting more and more worn over time. Um, we're going to expand this beyond weapons to uh, uh, other FPS sites. This one don't look that worn. I don't know if it's because of the camo. Um, they don't look too worn out. In actual game, this would be triggered by weapon uses, right? So the more you fire your gun, the more worn it's going to get. And this is going to affect this one looks worn out on the top. It's going to affect its reliability and it's going to make uh, reduce its resale value. Um, That's cool. I like that. Each item is going to wear it at its own rate and persist at its own rate. So you could have a, a worn rifle with a pristine scope. Or a I can see by the scope is worn out. Scope. That's cool. Check this one out. There you go. Oh, yeah, that one's definitely worn out, even by the mag. So the geometry isn't the only thing they're going to change as your weapon wears. So here we're going to see a pristine um, Gemini pistol in the little window and a worn one in the big window. And you can see the visual effects. It's belching out smoke here because it's very worn, right? It's Ooh, telling you, you know. That gun turned raggedy. this one changed. And you should be able to hear the audio as well. It's what armor is that? That armor is fire. <laughs> okay, on to some consequences. So... Just, it's not all visual, so we're gonna stop in misfire. So the first thing that's gonna happen is, you press the trigger, your gun doesn't fire. The second thing that happens in this video, you got- That bad boy jammed. I had that happen to me at a gun uh, range. Oh, you, you guys know what's happening, so he goes, D -d 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 -d, and then he goes, click. That's the bullet getting lodged in the chamber, right? You so don't want that to happen. It. So he's telling us to fix it. We're hitting the button, we're hitting the button. Our enemy's firing on us. So you've got some options. You don't have to fix it. You could holster your gun, you could pull out a new gun. Uh, you could use that new looting interface that Ines showed to, to grab a better gun. Yeah, you don't want that happening in a gunfight. Yeah. That'll cost you. That's okay, I'm going to finish this section with the features that's tangentially related to wear, and that's the dirt accumulation. So here again, we're going to see a simulation of dirt accumulating over time on the, on the same rifles we saw before. But in the actual game, so I can barely see it on this gun. Activities and the environment you're in. So if you're running around in a sandstorm, you're rolling in mud, uh, you leave your gun. Oh, I think I storage, see it now. I see the dirt. Oh, the, it's going to accumulate dirt, and that's going to increase the rate at which it wears. So when he the, turned the dirtier your gun is, the faster it will wear out. And this is true for other biome accumulations. Oh, yeah, that one got dusty. Like, uh, frost. So let's take a look at this one as well. Oh, or not. So he said the weather is going to mess it up. So my thing okay, is. Okay, so yeah. So in the future, it's going to be really important that you keep your guns clean and repaired. Uh, I'm not going to welcome Zach on. So this is my thing. If I go outside in the snow or if I swim with this gun in the water, would it probably take damage? 
on bad weather. That's what I want to know. And then we don't have that many ships with like gun racks. So all this jamming and stuff, we're going to have to fix it at stations. I don't, we don't have no workbenches on too many ships right now. I know, I think right now the Carrick may have a, a workbench. What else? I don't think the 890 has it. Um, I know some ships in the future that will have it. Are the Endeavor. Uh, the Idris has a, a like a yeah, that thing has a whole armory and workbench in there, so you good on there. Uh, Javelin, I'm pretty sure it's some more ships, but yeah, smaller ships you have no workbench or gun rack. So hopefully, maybe you can fix in your hangar and stuff if you don't have a bigger ship. Stage, and he's gonna talk to you more about the FPS weapons. Thank you very much. I want that squadron for you too, Jersey I'm dog. Priest. I'm a senior FPS game designer. I'm here to share some of the new, interesting FPS things we have to bring you. So if you play modern shooters, you'll have noticed the quality bar has gone through the roof in recent years. Things from visual recoil eh. to VFX, just overall general weapon feel. As you know, we recently did a pass on our weapons to- Some of these modern shooters are mid. We couldn't hit that quality bar that you know, we really wanted to. Because guns are violent in nature, we couldn't portray that as much as we wanted to. So, we made a new tool. And it allows us to show the violent nature of weapons while you know, creating greater weapon-to-weapon -weapon variety. You know. So, and they, this new tool also integrates better with other systems. For example, you just saw like wear and dirt and things like that. And I'm extremely proud to show you the new weapon recoil. So this is the old P4. It kind of falls a bit flat. You're not really getting that like oomph that you want. But you've probably shot this a million times. Now the new P4. It has these nice little bop downs, and you feel it getting wow. close to the camera. And the overall that aggression looks more of the control. weapon is a lot more there. It feels a lot more visceral when you fire it. This new tool gives the us great control all over, over the movements of the weapon. So essentially what we have in one of our tools now is almost an animation tool where we can control the rotation and the loca location of things. So this is the old PA SMG. This is a new one. Oh, and in general, yeah. it's bringing the house down now. So recalls are just, in general, easier to tweak now. And they're a lot more impactful and we can create weapon variety in the just far new, more in interesting ways. Wow. Cool. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, cheers. Hey, FPS is even getting better. I already loved it. I know they, I knew they was going to clean it up even more. New procedural animation over our ADS. So previously, as uh, if you play right now, you I love those light up sights. I got that on my gun too. And sure, it's there, but you know now we layered some of this procedural stuff on top. So for example, even an SMG, it can come a lot quicker. It can flick up. You feel really cool. LMGs can be a lot more heavy. So before it basically just do uh, you know move from post to post, but now we can like keep it longer down here, bring it up slowly, and overall it just feels like you've got an LMG or it feels like you've got an SMG. We're just using things like you know ease in and ease outs and just. That's more huge. Life to the overall weapon. That's huge to give guns their own feel. There we go. And we also have new iron sights. So, sci fi weapons are chonky. They're full of detail. They look really uh, cool. But. Okay, so I kind of like the one on the left a little better, only because the whole thing is like the light up sight. But I like the shape of the one on the right. So, they need to make that square orange. I want that right here. On here, just a little orange, because that's beautiful. Not just the tip, giggity. But yeah, put the orange around there. A lot of that detail can potentially get in the way sometimes. So you've seen, this is a change to the Kana, where we have raised the weapon sight and given what we call the target acquisition window more room to breathe. So if you're aiming at somebody, you can just generally see a lot more. So optics aren't a crutch anymore. So you can see mm. this on the Ravager. Okay, Ravager definitely and better. And you on the Custodian. The custodian kept his sights, okay. Now, weapon functionality changes. So as you imagine with the new recoil tool, we're gonna do a pass on all the existing weapons. They're gonna look and feel great. Look at the bullets fly. While, you know, while we were looking at our weapons, we also realized that some things don't necessarily, you know, 
align with their manufacturer, right? You look at something like a Gemini pistol. Now, Gemini overall, it's rule of cool. Like, that's what Gemini is supposed to be. So the LH86 pistol should be fully automatic. Gemini is my favorite gun manufacturer, by the so way. So we have a video like to show you of the pistol. Aegis ships and Gemini just go hand in and hand. as you can see, it goes ballistic when you fire it. The magazine count has also increased Damn. to allow for that just crazy feeling that the pistol gets. Oh, I can't wait to try that gun out. <laughs> that cool. thing's a beautiful ass gun. Cool. Thank you very much. Right, and moving on to our new vault weapons. So, oh, it's the other video. Oh, what the hell happened? That's the optic one. There you go. Thank you. Uh, these are the vault weapons. So, vault is primarily based around controlling the heat of a weapon. These weapons have the potential to overheat. See, this one got the square lighting on there. The little to fire. That's exactly. Ooh, man, that looks good, though. And they will enact differently. So some weapons will just basically be beams from the get-go. Some will go into beams. Like, see, this one goes into a beam once it reaches a certain level of heat. And it's really fun because, you know, these are quite powerful weapons. And you basically want to manage the heat and, you know, uh, keep it in that, like, ideal spot. I don't okay. think I ever cool. used energy weapons before. And scope improvements. Now, this was shown yesterday, but I want to dig in a little bit more with this one. So, oh. <laughs> so to get our, if anyone plays a modern FPS, they know that optics are just gorgeous now. In, in all modern shooters, they look fantastic. I like how this site actually magnifies. As you can see, There's so many red dots that don't do that in games. Optics in the center. So we ha and then we have other things like parallax, like you see in real life. Oh, and they I like look that. gorgeous. And, um, so, in general, all our sights and scopes have been overhauled oh, to be more realistic. That is so things beautiful. Things like parallax, pin cushion distortion, and things you'd expect from having a scope in general. Yeah, I like that distortion. And it differs manufacturer to manufacturer, right? So, some things are purely digital, some things are purely physical. So, if you get hit by an EMP grenade, for example, we're using something like a television sight, like something like um, Cluey might have, then your optic would turn off. Oh. Right. Thank you. That'll suck. Your scope or your optics go out? Shit. I like how you can't quick scope either. And that should be weapons are ultimately as only good as they sound. I'll be quiet for this next bit. But as you know, we've done a lot of work on our audio propagation systems and just in general how guns sound. We've also switched out some noises and made them feel a, a lot more beefy. Shit, that used to sound good to me back then, shit. Oh, yeah, that's, that's a little more ferocious. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Oh, yeah, I got some deep bass in it, boy. That sounds like a machine gun. Fantastic. I think all of California heard us there. Hey, um, he, hey, look, he ain't lying. That those gun sounds in that theater sounded so magical. It was beautiful. And I wish I had money for that uh that setup. But what sounds good in FPS shoes, I haven't tried it in Star Citizen yet because I haven't played yet. These headsets right here, dude, these are like haptic feedback or like they vibrate in your ear. Dude, I've never been more immersed. I was playing Battle Bit, just the the sounds and the guns, just wisdom pass shoot. One of the, some of the best headphones I ever used in my life. The only negative about these is um, when it, the battery dies, you can't um, plug them up and have them charged on your ear. I hate wireless headsets like that. That's so stupid. When they die, let me charge them and use them at the same time. I, they could just be wired. I don't understand that. But uh, I will leave the link in the description for these. I, for I forgot to name them. I got to go look it up. But, uh, yes, these are freaking beast for sure. And you probably give you that punch and sound. I can't wait to hear how these guns sound on those. Um, so, backpack reloading. In real-life combat scenarios, you often grab magazines from other surplus areas. And we're going to simulate that in our game. So, To show you this, we have something called backpack reloading. If you run out of ammo in Star Citizen, you have to open a menu, put things on. It's a little bit clunky, it's a little bit awkward. So if you have magazines in your backpack, you will now be able to grab them at the price of a longer reload animation. 
Okay, I like that. You will also be able to tell when you have a backpack reload coming up because it will be displayed on the inventory with the backpack symbol. So there's no surprises, no catching up. You have all the information you need. And that, this has been shown, hell. and it has been teed a little bit, the dynamic crosshair. Now, no more third-party uh, dynamic crosshair, well, crosshairs now. So, if you have a look at this, this is our new crosshair. It's a crosshair that fits the aesthetic of Star Citizen. It's a crosshair that follows the barrel of the weapon, so you'll see exactly where a bullet is going to land. And it's projected from the wow. visor using AR. Some visors won't have access to this crosshair, but some will use modified combat lenses. So if you don't want to use the crosshair, you can just use a different visor. As you can see, it works with recoil, and overall, it just looks gorgeous. You know, people complained about this, like, oh, I don't want to use that. And I don't understand, like, did you not listen? He said it's certain glasses and AR glasses that let you use that. You could take it off if you don't want to use it. And people are still complaining. I don't understand that. It looks cool to me. As long as you got an option to turn it on and off, ain't no, I don't see the problem. And on to more data things, we're going to provide an improved PVE experience. The accuracy calculator for NPCs is coming over from Squadron 42. Some people have been playing it in the venue in here, and I've been harassing them, whoever's doing the hangar mission, to get their feedback, and it has been overwhelmingly positive. We also have new NPC archetypes, what we're temporarily calling the Juggernaut, which is basically a very high damage resistant enemy that has an LMG or a shotgun. As soon as they see you, they fire Ooh, I like that. up to you. And overall, it's been playing amazingly. And I'm So what I would like to see with the Juggernauts, and we haven't heard about this thing in so long, is the Titan suit. I want to see some of these Juggernauts, probably not at every spot, because I know they're probably going to be hard to take out. I want to see a Titan Juggernaut. Like, we're going to have to work together, take this out. <laughs> like, he's the final dude coming out, with, probably with a couple regular juggernauts, too. So, a couple of them, and then you got the main juggernaut and the Titan just wreaking havoc. You don't go in there with, if you don't have real guns or a grenade launch, you don't come in there prepared, you and your squad will get wrecked. Because I know, I think they were finishing up some work in 2023, because it has to be in Squadron 42. Uh, the Titan suit. So I, we haven't heard anything about it since then. So I would love to see that uh, in these bunkers. I'm really happy for you guys. Well, I'm really excited for you guys to get your hands on it at one point. If you see them, you know you're getting PvP, good loot. We want to increase the time to kill. This allows for more varied weapon balancing. You know, we can lay into like sort of a different aspects of the element more. It leads to higher skill ceiling and less unfair deaths. It will no longer be a game of whoever shoots whoever first. Speaking of which, <laughs> Call of Duty. Uh. we're reworking them, we're aware it's frustrating, and we are going to rework the system to work beautifully. And we're also working some other highly requested PvP changes. I'm very happy to I say like a lot of this work has been dialed in for Squadron 42, is in a very good state, and we're bringing this to you soon. <laughs> TM. Now, over to the AI director, Fran, to share some exciting updates on combat AI. And how soon is soon? Because some of this stuff looks like it could go in next patch. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. So, I'm Francesco Rocucci, as you said, and I'm the AI director in CIG. Got a cool ass it's name. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you guys. It's fantastic. So what we're going to do today is to explore how we, all the work we've done for Squadron 42 is going to flow into the Star Citizen experience. So we wanted to make the AI presentation about how you guys are going to experience the tech and the features we have been working on. So from the player perspective, you've seen how many new opportunities you have. And now it's interesting to see how the NPC are going to react to that. So the goal of Star Citizen is to build a breathing and living environment where your actions matters and the NPC you will find in the universe needs to have the same opportunities and same limitations that you have. So when we play a game, we want you to spend the time that feels memorable, that feels special, right? Something you can remember and talk about. Right. So we want you to give you a challenge to overcome, but also a, ch a challenge that is fun and doesn't feel repetitive and boring. So when we look at the FPS encounter, we want to build variety. We want to give the designers, like Zach, the ability to craft combat scenarios, not just to put NPC in the level. And we need to make sure that he can tweak something such that 
he can experience the unique play spa style and the play space that you oh, have. I love that. So Star Citizen can benefit from tons of unique environments. So for those environments, we want you to have different type of fun. So what we look at today is that some of the tools that they have to achieve this goal and bring the eye to the next level. So the first tool we're gonna look at today is the MPC trait system. So we spoke about this in the past. Look at all these traits. We have traits. now available for designers the initial set of traits they can use that's to about the behavior. So that's about 20 traits, and then it says more right there. That's about 20 traits that the NPCs are gonna have. That's insane. Because a game I think that used to do this, I, I used to love, was Halo. Halo would have the grunts, um, the little shield dudes with the pistol behind the shield. Then you would have the sniper that would be back trying to shoot at you. And then you had the elites. Uh, the elites were, would take a lot of hits, and they would run up on you. They weren't scared. It was tough. Um, and then what was it? The brute? Was it brutes? The gorilla-looking ones? I forgot them. They, they would take a lot of hits and were very strong. Oh, and then uh, what was the name of the other ones? Um, they were like blue, and they were like huge Hulk-looking aliens. And they would shoot and smash you. They would probably be like one or two at a time. Those were probably the hardest in the game to, uh, to take out. Sometimes you'd have to get rocket launchers or warthogs. Um, so Halo was the tourist, but that's why it was one of my favorite FPSs because it had the variety of, you know, uh, different NPCs coming at you and attacking you. Now we got this. This is like that on steroids. Like this is going to make sure that it's not a freaking shooting gallery like Call of Duty campaigns where all the NPCs do the same damn thing. No, these dudes are going to be attacking you. Some are going to be scared, friendly. Some are going to be taking cover. Some are going to be pushing you, strafing. Like, I love that. So those are some of the ones that are available to the designers. Today we're going to focus on the combat traits because we have traits that also apply to the peaceful situation and the social environment. But those are the ones that influence NPCs during a combat scenario. And traits, you can imagine them as characteristics NPCs have or don't have. So through the usage, we can make sure the combat feels different be from one encounter to another. Traits in tech, tech-wise, are just Dude. traits and tags that we can apply to character instance, character classes, but code can also apply them automatically based on specific rules. This might be some example, of the example, best if you see NPCs. Somebody, uh, um, you know, with a rocket launcher, those will apply an example, the, tr the sentry trait automatically because those weapons are weapons that work well arranged, so you want mm. you know, them to not push forwards to you. So they allow to block or actually, uh, you know, they allow or they block specific section of the behaviors to run, but they also influence the likelihood of some logic to happen or they, are, they modify the outcome of specific actions. So let's imagine we want to model a pirate faction, something that you can actually experience in the pyro playground. So we want them to feel aggressive, but also not very trained. They are not very military. So how do we do it with the traits? Mm. We can start adding to this faction, either the aggressive or reckless trait, those are traits that increase the risky behaviors. So for example, fighting more in open space or expose themselves longer when they are in cover. We can then assign to some of those pirates the ignore fire obstruction trait. As you've seen, for example, in the Chris Rain presentation during the CTG demo, like we have now destructible environment. So what the NPC will try to do is to keep shooting at the position the enemy has been hiding into. So you will see the strong environment, but they you will huh. also see them being less careful and, man and managing their ammo. For others, we could use the undisciplined trigger finger trait. So this trait is, for example, men. See, I really like this. I just hope not all pirates will be like this. Like some factions, you know, like, hey, uh, this faction of pirates is more trained or more like a kind of militia versus like these other pirates. Like they're like piss poor, let's say pyro pirates, whatever. Like, you know, different levels of pirates. You got the new pirates and you got the disciplined pirates. I, I would really like to see that the different different types. That not just all pirates are trash. Like some of them are real good. Same with maybe some military stuff. Um, well, UEE stuff is probably always going to be the top of the line, but 
some of these little towns will have certain militias are going to be trained good. Some ain't going to be trained well. So I like that to have uh, different varieties. And to uh, convey the inability to control their weapon when they are emotionally engaged in the fight. And what it will cause is them to trigger the weapon much longer compared, or much, or, or, or you know, also just a bit longer compared to what the behavior is asking. So being better preserving their ammo means they will also run out of bullets much quicker. So these offer interesting bullets. opportunities for players because they can now shoot at them while they reload or where they scavenge the environment. So traits are building blocks we can use to define our character, faction, or encounter should feel. And designer can now create a, a wide variety of encounters for you guys. Well, I can't wait to see all to different factions. So, we want, I want to make a picture for you guys. So this is the bunker mission in Pyro. They're right? all moving. And we have a set of enemies that are defending the environment. They're not just sitting so still for you to shoot them like a target. Infiltrate and destroy mission. Those guys are there defending the bunker. And you need to take it over. You need to uh, basically uh, kill them all. You are now fighting against enemies that they defend the environment. So before we go to the next slide, imagine the Ooh. same environment, very similar enemies, but different traits, same behavior. So now you are defending an environment and they are aggressive towards the environment. They want to take it. So what you will see here is that created a mix of enemies. So I'm equipped with, for example, shotgun and aggressive traits. Now they will push towards you. They will force you to take actions and to react to them. I like that. Look at that. They reload. Some will cover up. Yeah, he's pushing. He was sitting back. With, with God mode on, so Zach was not dying. So this is possible to set up with a tick of a box. But this is not just about enemies. Because in Star Citizen, we want you to hire your own crew members. And those, those crew members, those characters, will have different personalities, different traits different training level that they can build up. But when you look at their traits, we want you to see their strengths and their weaknesses so that you can pick the one that either match your play style or mm. compensate your play style. That's gonna be cool. I want a whole bunch of snipers and uh, so people with rockets. So one thing that we want to show you today is the medic. So there are some NPCs that can carry, obviously, med pants. But not everybody is able to use it well or wants to use it in a specific encounter. So we want to tweak this, and uh, we have the medic trait. Here we combine a lot of the tech that we have spoken in the past, usable tech, you know, behavior tech. And as Jens showed you, players now can just not only kill enemies, because before our NPCs would just die. But now you can take them down, you can restrain them. So the eye perception is to carry all this information about the different actor states. So he needs to know if he's down, but if he's still Ooh. alive, or if it's just, you know, <laughs> somebody that you need to wake up. You're going to have to hit the double tap so on these fuckers. In the they land down, put two in their head, like bow, bow, bow. Can, when it's safe to do so, and at the right time, attempt to heal his mate that can be helped. So now you can imagine guard patrolling the environment. You take down a character. The guard finds this, that this body on the ground. He doesn't know if he's alive or not. So he can go there. He can check it, check the pulse, see the state. And if he can be helped, he can basically execute the right healing process. If he needs a med pen, he will use the med pen. If he needs to shake him to wake him up, he will shake him up. And if he needs to un unrestrain him, he will unrestrain him. And your crew members can also do the same with you. So if you are down in critical condition, they can come and help you out. Oh, I love that. We'll see now an example of this, where two factions are fighting. And you will see that at the right time, when the guy retreats, this guy can go there and heal his mate. Man, I just want them to run this smooth in the verse. In the PU, and obviously, man. obviously, he needs to pick up a new weapon because he just dropped it. Why did he just pick up his, his last weapon that so he dropped? So, as mentioned before, and as you've seen here, NPC can run out of bullets, but can also lose their weapons. So, what we have to do right now is that, first of all, we want NPCs to have a concrete ammo pool to use. We don't want infinite ammo anymore. So... I thought infinite ammo was ammo one of those slides or one of those traits. By the ammo NPC carrying their weapons, the one that they carry, the one that might have, 
and all the magazines they carry. They don't have any more bullets out of that. So MPC must probably use those items to fight. And the longer the engagement, the more likely it is they will run out of bullets and they will have to scavenge the environment. How do they do that? It's through the, MPC, the usable system, as you've seen with Inesh as well, the Inesh presentation. You see that anything the player can interact with, the NPCs actually can, the same exact way. So the dead bodies can be looted, same as dropped weapons. Ammo crates will have physically inside some weapons, magazines. They can provide you with items. And the NPC can understand where you can find ammo that are actually functioning with their own weapons. And they actually can decide. For example, if, they, if it's better to reach an ammo crate and gather some new ammo, or if that is too far or towards the enemy, they can decide to pick up another weapon. Wow. So you will see that. Uh, also already in, the, in, in Pyro, you might see it. And once they decide to do so, obviously they don't have bullets, so they cannot fight you. What they can do, they can also switch to their sidearms. And the sidearms is less effective, obviously, from the pri compared to the primary weapon, but it is still better than nothing for them to protect themselves while they go around and they loot the environment. So we'll see here an example where some NPC run out of bullets. Obviously, in this video, we give them a chance to, to go and loot as well. And this is a proper ammo crate that allows them to... Oh, yeah, I'm going to stab the hell out of them. Magazines. Or uh, I'm going to pistol whip them. Like, whap, whap. And another NPC arrives, and he will loot the dead body. This is the same, the same dead body you might be able to loot, and you will not find ammo after that. <laughs> hey, he beat him to the punch. Hey, that's awesome, You will probably dude. find it in the other one, once you kill it. So, last but not least, another tool in the FPS arsenal is grenades. Grenades are a great tool. Grenadas. You can now fully react and use grenades in the environment. So, grenades are a great tool, especially when uh, an NPC needs to counter a player that is camping or a player that is hiding or, say, in a location that the, player, the NPC cannot reach. They say camping, so uh oh. Grenades force the movement that keep the action going, but they're also very dangerous. You've seen in Ali presentation and Mike presentation that a grenade can make electronics explode, ignite a fire, and then the fire can propagate in the environment. So NPCs need to properly understand the environment and not jump into the fire and, and not get damaged. So mm. how do we do that? Is we have a new full system to handle hazards. Basically, hazard on the technical side can create a navigation volume modifier, and the navigation module modifier gets registered in the navigation system, and now our um, basically mesh can be modified, and it will carry semantic about w if that is a dangerous, something better, and how much costly it is to go through. Because maybe you have a suit that allows you to go through the fire, so that is fine. You will not, you know, Ooh, the NPC can understand suit? that. But if they can't, they will try to find positions that are safe for them to position themselves, but also paths that will avoid those dangerous areas. And now we'll see an example of that. You know, this is a safe environment, still fighting, but safe, safer. And what it will happen now? Fire ignites and propagates. This is fully dynamic, so it, it fully control. It's fully controlled by the fire Ooh, system. Oh, pretty. The fire system modifies volumes in the navigation system. And That's really cool. He blocked. We can he blocked that NPC pass. off from going this way, so he had to go around. That is so cool. Man, now they had to go around. That is dope, dog. Oh. So this is a subset of the things that we worked on and we wanted to show you today. Thanks very much for listening. And now back to Jens. I can't wait to see how they react when ships start burning up. <laughs> right. I want to thank Inesh. I want to thank Zach. And I want to thank Francesco for joining me on stage today. Uh, we want to extend a massive thank you to everyone who contributed to, supported us, and made it possible to show what we showed today. Now, with relentless optimism, we're looking forward to bringing you this all to the Star Citizen and more. Okay, we're going to leave you with a, uh, a quick peek of a, a demo in Hangar 14 of Checkmate with some of these new features. Enjoy. Now I played this demo, guys, um, and I had it, it, they were the, the NPCs were pretty fun. I got a, a video of it.
on, on my YouTube, so make sure you guys check it out. I had to record it with the, the camera, though, so it's not on screen. Um, but the NPCs were pretty reactive. Uh, moving, finding cover, pushing me, but there were some that were still being, like, just sitting around. You walk in their face, and they're just all derpy, so... But other people had different results, and they was working for them, so... Yeah, still all that loot. Hey, man, that aim is pretty good. This looks so good. And it sounds so good. You can kind of hear hear some of them going behind. Oh, they run up them stairs. They getting busy, getting higher ground. Asia brought some more grenades. You don't see that one right there? Oh, he dying out. Oh, he injured. Shoot him in the head. I oh, finished that fucker off. That was a nice shot. It's kind of hard to see him in the dark, though, with that scope. Yeah, I want to see some blood, man. They showed all that blood stuff. I want to see some blood on some faces. I want to see them leaking. Where is that at? Damn. Oh, that must have been that one earlier I heard that was behind him. Damn, he over there, Millie Rock. He was like, oh. <laughs> right. Thank you That's very awesome. Much. I, I urge you all to come and join us in the Pyro Playground pit and have a go at Hangar 13 in, check, in Checkmate. It's a really great encounter. Thank you. It was great. I had fun playing that demo. Definitely was great. So, um... Yeah, guys, this was amazing stuff that they're doing. The FPS was already good. It's just getting better. And I was expecting that because a lot of these dudes are the geniuses who made Crytek, and they just came on over to Star Citizen. So we're fortunate enough to have some of them guys who built, uh, you know, uh, Crisis. I'm sorry, not Crytek. Well, yeah, they're from Crytek, and they built Crisis. Some of those guys who were on that game are now with CIG. So... That's why some of the gun gameplay is amazing. The FPS stuff is amazing. And that's what I love about Star Citizen. You got the, the FPS, and I'm a flight sim dude, and they just smashed into one. You, you can't ask for anything better. That's why I love and support CIG so much because of the amazing stuff they're doing. But, um, yeah, hopefully I see you guys on my second channel, Sub Geo two times because this is my last react on this channel. Hope you guys enjoyed hanging with me. Uh, this was a long time of recording all these, and uh, I got to get to editing these. So I will see you guys on the next one.